Hey, here's a thought. Are you wondering what prayer is all about? People have asked me why they should pray. God bless you all. Dave here with another video to talk about your prayer life. Yes, prayer is part of life. It is not a task. There is something called a prayer life. We'll talk today about two scriptures. You can check it out. James 5.16 and Romans 8.26. I'll talk about those later, but those are the two scriptures I'm going to talk about today. There's a fancy word that goes with prayer. It's called fervent, fervent. That's right, fervent, F-E-R-V-E-N-T, fervent. A fervent prayer is one that has enthusiastic, sincere, strong feelings. A fervent person has or shows strong feelings about something and is very sincere and enthusiastic about it. Before talking about prayer, I had to talk about fervent. So remember, a fervent prayer is one that has enthusiastic, sincere, strong feelings. So let's now go to the scripture. In the scripture, James 5, 16, God promises all believers that if we live righteously and pray fer and pray, I should say, and pray fervently, our prayers will be effective and produce significant results. So let me read how the scripture says, um, James 5, 16, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. And that is in James 5.16. Now, most versions or other versions use the word fervent. Remember, we talked about the word fervent. For example, in James 5.16, prayers of the righteous, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And that's in James 5.16. But in general, what it's saying, as I read to you before in the other version of the scripture, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for, an for another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer or the fervent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. So what are we talking about here in James 5, 16? The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. That's the bottom line. This means when we have wronged another person, we are called to go to them quickly and admit our sin and seek their forgiveness. That is the will of God. That is how God wanted people to be. We have to be careful and aware of harboring unforgiveness. That means holding it in our heart. Unforgiveness is, is like a cancer. It can infect us. You see, this verse is telling us to deal with unforgiveness. You see, unforgiveness is a hidden pain many, if not all of us, carry. When we confess our sins to one another and to God, our Father in heaven, that fellowship is renewed and our prayers become effective. That's what we're talking about here. You see, God promises all believers that if we live righteously, and pray powerfully, another way of saying to pray fervently, our prayers will be effective and produce significant results. So how do we treat a promise like this? We might argue, but I do pray and nothing happens. Our problem is that we do not hold ourselves accountable to the scripture. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's right. We have to be accountable to the scripture. Listen to this. When we pray powerfully, then by natural instinct, we hold ourselves accountable to the scripture. This is why we talked about praying fervently. This is the power of prayer. God's word, that means what is written in the Bible, God's word says that prayer ought to be accomplished many things in our lives. It ought to accomplish much. If our prayer life is not accomplishing much, we should examine ourselves. We should see what's up with ourselves, check in with ourselves to see if we meet the conditions of a fervent prayer. Remember, a fervent prayer is one that has enthusiastic, sincere, strong feelings. 
and a fervent person has or shows strong feelings about something and is very sincere and enthusiastic about it. Now, James says that a fervent prayer avails much. Fervent prayer means we do not quite quit easily. Fervent prayer means we purposefully spend sufficient time in intercession. Fervent prayer means we cry out to the Father, sometimes in tears with our heart and soul. That's what a fervent prayer looks like. A fervent prayer comes as the Holy Spirit assists us in praying with groanings too deep for words. We learn about that in Romans 8, 26. So let me read to you Romans chapter 8, verse 26. So that's Romans 8, verse 26. And the scripture says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. That's in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. God knows our limitations and frustrations. We only need to seek him. He knows that our flesh is weak even when our spirit is willing. So his spirit intercedes for us even for needs that cannot be put into words. According to James, our righteousness will ensure effective prayer. God's standard of righteousness is different from ours, for he looks beyond our actions and even beyond our thoughts and directly to our hearts. Think about that. God's standard of righteousness is not the same as ours. He's not concerned about our actions. And he even looks beyond our thoughts. He looks directly into our hearts. That's what he's seeking. God is seeking our hearts. So the spirit prays for us when we are aware of it or not. But for our own comfort and confidence, it is important that we should be aware of what the spirit is doing on our behalf. God knows our hearts and is intimately acquainted with our groaning. How then should we hold ourselves accountable if our prayers are accomplishing little? If nothing happens when we pray, the problem is not with God. The problem is with us. For God's word is absolutely reliable. It really is. If we adhere to what God requires, and that's in the Bible, he will lead us to pray for things that align with his purposes, and God will answer our prayers in a mighty way. So that's the deal. Check out the scriptures, and that's in James chapter 5, verse 16, and Romans chapter 8, verse 26. From the Resurrection Center, my name is Dave.